Welcome on back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Madisonville Marine. They have the greatest selection of boats anywhere in East Tennessee. There a lot of times you may be sitting there thinking, you know, I, I want the fishing boat, but you know, I got the I got the wife and kids, and maybe a pontoon would be best for them. And you wind up going to a couple of different places: one that sells pontoons, one that sells uh, a fishing boat, and you're trying to decide. Just go to Madisonville Marine. They have pontoons fishing boats, they have deck boats, they have any kind of boat you can imagine. With the exception of landing ducks, you know, we're, we're here on the anniversary of D-Day, I think that may be the only, maybe arcs. <laughs> they don't carry arcs or ducks, but other than that, they've got every kind of boat you could want at Madisonville Marine, and they'll work with you, to, uh, talk to you uh, in detail to see which of those boats is best for you and your family's needs. Uh, get down there this week, Highway 411 North in Madisonville. All right, back with Chuck, Mike, John, and Bob. A couple of weeks ago, the Southeastern Conference announced its schedule rotation plan for the next 11 years, plus this year, of course. That's 2014 through 2025. That's a 12-year cycle. At MrSEC.com, we wanted to see which teams will have the easiest and toughest schedules in each division based on history. So uh, for Tennessee, for example, we would add up the all-time bowl appearances for each team that they play in the East, and then this year you got all-time bowl appearances for Alabama and the all-time bowl appearances for Ole Miss. All right. Then next year you would look at the rotation again. Same with every other team in the league. So this is based on 12 years of schedule rotation, mm -hmm. conference games only, the all-time bowl appearances by the team's opponents. Let's take a look at the East and West Division. Wow, the toughest schedule in the SEC is by far Tennessee's. I mean, just huge difference between anybody else. Uh, that's not 1,050, that's 1,150, and the next toughest is Florida at 990. But you look down the list, you've got then Missouri at 930, Georgia at 920, Alabama 908, Auburn 908, oh, and there's LA. Oh, wait, no, then you got to go back to South Carolina and Vanderbilt, <laughs> then there's LSU with 818, <laughs> those crybaby whiners from the bayou. Uh, thoughts on what you're seeing there, Ole Miss, easiest schedule based on history of anyone in the SEC. They're all, they're, their permanent opponent, of course, from the East is Vanderbilt. So that's why you're getting And you play there. Mississippi State every year. Yes, you, who's yeah. also at the one, one yeah. of the I'm looking at Tennessee with the most, and yet that's the, they, they play Vanderbilt and Kentucky every year who probably don't have as many bowls as a lot of people do. But so you do get Alabama who's got more yeah, than anyone. Right. And you've got Georgia who's way up there and Florida who's way yeah. up there. So wow. that's that's the that's the trick for Tennessee. Um, you know, and, I, and that makes you wonder. I mean, Tennessee fans don't seem to to bring this up a whole lot. I mean, I don't think per LSU, <laughs> Tennessee fans, the fans don't sit there and yeah. and you know they want to play Alabama, they want to play Florida. Heck, I think Tennessee fans would like it if you brought Auburn back into the mix yep. because that was such a traditional rival. So yeah, kudos to the fans because you don't hear Tennessee complaining. Yeah, that, about that's my other question. Now you have a different view on this, and I'm going to throw it back to you because in your from what I gather, your feeling is Tennessee should want out of that Alabama series. Uh, well, if you're if you're it depends on your priorities. And okay. if your priority is to have a level playing field uh, and not be at a competitive disadvantage, yes. Uh, you should. Tennessee fans should complain about having to play Alabama every year. But but that's apparently not the priority of most fans. They're, most fans are more into the tradition. Yeah, well, that's who you have to strive to beat, to me. I mean, and, and these yeah. things go in cycles, and we yeah. think Alabama's going to be great forever. But, you know, and, and with the contracts that are being thrown out there, they will be probably good for a while. But mm -hmm. there's, there's always somebody you have to strive to beat. And there's somebody you either got to have to outwork or out recruit or out something. And if it's Alabama, so be it. I mean, to me, that makes the chance of being able to pull that upset mean that much more. So like, I, I don't want them gone. I want them on the schedule. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that, could be, that should be considered when you're talking about a Butch Jones and what he's having to rebuild. Yeah. But at the same time, I agree with you. You've got to strive to beat those guys. I, I wouldn't. We remember how much, and we'll talk about non-conference scheduling in the next segment. We remember how most people reacted when Tennessee chickened out against North Carolina, Carolina. and bought their yep. way out of that game, or I, bocked, or bocked <laughs> their way out of that game. I, I think that uh, Tennessee fans deserve a lot of credit for not doing what Les Miles and Joe Oliva and the entire LSU fan base has done about the ninth or tenth toughest schedule in the league because they have to play Florida. Pathetic. Well, and Chuck's thing about it being a cycle, that t Alabama's cycle is about to come to an end with its dominance over Tennessee. If you look back historically, yeah. historically, each team goes on about a 10, 12-year run. 
and then the other team takes over. So, so it's about over for you, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> John, your thoughts on the, the schedule and what you say? Well, I, I do think that there is credit to be given, and, and it's because you can't have it both ways. You can't say it's all about tradition in the Southeastern Conference and then say, yeah, but that third Saturday in October isn't really that special. So right. let's see if we can't get a couple of the, the lesser teams from the West Division. So you appreciate what has built your program, what has allowed your your team to, to rise to the level it has. And Tennessee's in the same shape in basketball. It's been the number two team with the most championships only to Alabama in football. And, and it's two or three in basketball. It's been passed, I think, by one team, uh, maybe Alabama. Yeah. Uh, in, in competing with Kentucky. Yeah. so But that's what Tennessee fans are used to. That's what they're proud of to be a part of their tradition. And, and so I think that's why they say, yeah, we want to play them. But at the same time, we know right now it's just not our side. Mm -hmm. uh, when we come back, that's Tennessee has the toughest in-conference schedule of anybody based on history over the, over the next 12 years. We'll look at how SEC teams have scheduled non-conference over the last six, seven years. And Tennessee's not as good as you might think. Uh, we'll also talk about the favorite cupcakes. Let's go back to that neon wipey board, Sean, if we could cruise. Uh, yeah, see, that's supposed to be a cupcake behind John, and, and like, it, it actually looks more like a... A, a celery. A, 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 new, a celery or a nuclear <laughs> mushroom. Yeah, yeah. Celery, <laughs> celery. mushroom. Okay, uh, when we come back, we'll talk celery, <laughs> nuclear mushrooms, and cupcakes. Come on back.